What's up team crown? How na day? Waiting they happen, waiting they sup. Welcome back to our channel. Guys, here I was thinking and saying to myself, Hush Puppy's lawyer is now popular on social media and in Nigeria because of Hush Puppy. Most of his followers on Instagram are Nigerians. They are actually Nigerians. <laughs> well, so much for that. Okay, let's talk about today's news. New reports on Hush Puppy. Contrary to report that Hush Puppy has been released from prison just because the website, you know, the prison website indicated that he has been released. The lawyer reacting to that said the news is false and Hush Puppy has not been released from prison. He was only transferred to another prison instead. Um, he said the website only showed released because of his transfer from Chicago to another facility in California. The lawyer speaking with Punch News said he has not been released and I am still his lawyer. He's on his way to California. Not everything you see on court document is accurate. Just because the jail record says release does not mean he has been released. He is being transferred to California. Now, let's talk about Woodbury, Oshpopi's friend. You all know. According to Premium Times, the court has dismissed the case against Woodbury. What? Hmm. Remember, Woodbury was accused of tricking the Chicago companies into sending, you know, $15.2 million to him, right? Now, Woodbury, who is 29 years old, was facing charges bordering on wire fraud conspiracy in Illinois. But I remember I also reported that he was indicted by the grand jury some days ago, where they summed up the allegations against him to an eight-count charge of wire fraud. But the news today about Woodbury on final result is quite shocking. The court has dismissed the case. Now, here's the report about the dismissal. The United States government on Monday filed a motion through its attorney, Mr. John, requesting that the case against Woodbury should be dismissed without prejudice. Counsel for the government has spoken with counsel for the defendant and defendant counsel has no objection to this motion. He said it is in pursuance with federal rules of criminal procedure 48 which states that the government may, with leave of court, dismiss an indictment, information, or complaint. Also, the government may not dismiss the prosecution during trial without the defendant's consent. A court order issued by Judge Robert on Tuesday said the government's motion to dismiss complaint without prejudice was granted. When a case is dismissed with prejudice, it is over and done with, once and for all, and can't be brought back to court. However, when it is dismissed without prejudice, like in the case of Woodbury, the dismissal is temporary as the prosecutor can refile the case within a certain period of time. The probable causes of dismissal range from unavailability of sufficient evidence, an improper criminal complaint or charging documents to loss of evidence necessary to prove the defendant committed the crime. Premium Times, which is the source of this information, said that they are yet to obtain the reason for the dismissal against Woodbury and there are indications that the prosecutor will refile a case against him. He is yet to be released from detention at the time of this report. How would it be, guys, if Woodbury got his freedom and Osh Poppy couldn't, you know, or he's still struggling to get his freedom? That would be very, very interesting, isn't it? Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. The next news is about the confirmed and bigger criminals who call themselves politicians in Nigeria. You need to watch my previous video if you are yet to do so, um, where we discussed in detail about the whole NDDC scam. Yes, I call it scam because that's the best way to describe it and how Niger Deltans are stealing from Niger Delta youths. Remember, we talked about NDDC chairman Akpabio, <laughs> who accused the House of Assembly of being a hypocrite and being behind most of the stolen NDDC funds, since 60% of the contracts were awarded to some of their members. So, for me, I'm not against it because 
uh, of course, who are even the greatest beneficiaries? It's two people now. An allegation the House of Reps took seriously, where the Speaker of the House of Reps gave a Bill 48 hours to give names of lawmakers who he claimed received contracts from NDDC. I will take this matter and this allegation and accusation very serious. And I will give the minister 24 to 48 hours to publish the names, the contracts so given, the dates, because obviously these things will be documented. Unveil the companies of the 60% projects that were given to members of the National Assembly. Well, now the House of Reps are saying that they will sue Akpabiu for lying. Personally, even though I don't like Akpabiu, I believe him because we know <laughs> these are thieves investigating thieves. Anyways, the House of Reps have issued a criminal complaint of perjury and civil defamation suit against Mr. Akpabiu. And guess what? Few hours later, we got report that Akpabiu replied saying, I didn't say lawmakers got 60% of NDDC contract to... He denied accusing members of National Assembly of collecting 60% of the contract at the Niger Delta Development Commission. Can you imagine? This man is lying to our faces like we didn't even watch the video. This was caught on camera. <laughs> this man thinks we are fools. So, for me, I'm not against it because... Uh, uh, got, who are even the greatest beneficiaries? It's two people now. Okay. Because if you look at your, your chairman, your okay. chairman gave... Okay, okay. Honorable Minister. Uh, 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 Honorable Minister, that's okay. That's okay. That's that's okay. No, can I ask you that question? That's, what is the benefit uh, that the National uh, Assembly is benefiting from? It's okay, it's okay. Goma, uh, Goma, are okay. you asking me the benefit of National Assembly? Yes, Goma. you just said... I just told you that we have record to show that hmm? most of the contracts in NDDC are given out to members of National Assembly, but no, you don't know about it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You, it's okay. The two chairmen, the two chairmen can explain to you. That is why I was no, a member. No, 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 I was no, 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 a member of the NDDC committee. It's I okay. Know it's okay. okay. Wait. So, you so, were a member of the NDDC and lot of. Uh, wait. You were a member of the NDDC in the Eighth Assembly. Yes. And are you telling me that lots of jobs were awarded to you as a no, member? No. This is a problem. That's why I said you then must. you change. have the right to accuse people. Then why can't you bring it? Can bring you, up can you people that, to me? One of the chairmen. If also, you were not awarded a contract, then why are you coming here that you are aware that you were a member of the NDDC and lots of contracts were awarded to may you? I, may you I, said I, I'm not. I'm not aware. I'm telling you that. May I inform my honorable sister that that is why we have to change. Honorable member, honorable minister, please. It's okay. That is okay. That is okay. Wait, let me explain. No, it's okay. It's okay. Let me explain. It's okay. Now. It's okay. You must not allow the two children to have the budget. It's okay. Up your mind. It's okay. Uh, she, she is up like, your mind, honorable like, minister. You are like me. I was a member like you. I did not know what was going on. Honorable minister. Yes, it's okay. Chairman, yes, chairman. It's okay. You guys can sit down. Sit down. It's okay. In my last video, we also talked about how NDDC fraudulently, you know, siphoned the money meant for students, that is the youth of Ninja Delta, who were given scholarship to go study abroad, but into their personal account. And because the students couldn't pay their school fees, the schools had to kick them out. I will just mention the last one, which is the scholarship. Sir. In the last few weeks, we've gotten letters, mails, I have them. I can supply this committee of students, of uh, scholars abroad, who kept crying that their dues are not paid. They have been locked out of school. And one of them challenged me on Twitter and said I'm making noise about all that. That should please look into their own. He's still there. It's there. I can screenshot that ring. So we went into work and we discovered that Rather than paying students or scholars who are abroad, the NDDC team were busy paying themselves money meant for students. At least I saw payment made to officials. I mentioned to on air. I mentioned Dr. Cairo and I mentioned Professor Ponde DMD. I quoted the account details that they paid that money into. I quoted the day that was, I think it is here too. 
Well, a video of this student is now available online. Fellow Nigerians, we are here at the Nigeria High Commission in London. We are the representative of NDDC Foreign Postgraduate Scholarship for both the 2018 and 2019 awardees. We are here to register our displeasure with the management of NDDC and the way we have been treated. Many of us resumed since January 2020. Some came here as far back as September 2019. We have been here without our school fees and our upkeep. Several attempts have been made to reach out to the management of NDDC, but they have failed to respond. We are not interested in the politics that is going on. All we have come here for is to appeal to the president, President Muhammad Buhari, to prevail on the management of NDDC to please do the needful. Our schools now see us as liars. They are beginning to wonder if our award letters is not fraudulent. We have come here as ambassadors of Nigeria, not to discredit our nation, but to come out to let the world know that this is what we have been passing through. Songwriter and vocalist Mike has a message for these criminals called politicians. How can people be, 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 be looting 81, 80, 81 billion naira from a region? I'm not, I'm not, see, I'm not a civil engineer, right? But I know that 81 billion naira can build schools, bring people above the poverty line, empower youths in that region. Why are they clowning around with these things? What are they doing? Why are people not rising up in protest against these things? Why are criminals being allowed to judge criminals? What is going on in this country? Is this a stock play? What's happening in this country? For real, like, I am, I am, I'm damn tired of watching the same thing play out every single time. Why? Why are we like this? Why are we like this? Why are we leaving our future and the future of our children to be torn and gambled with in the hands of these politicians? Singari Song also has a message for the youths and the criminals. Or is it President Buhari? Yeah. This is not funny. This is not something to laugh about or do comedy skits uh, with or something to trend with. This is not funny. People are on national TV calling themselves politicians and leaders of Nigeria, mentioning how big amounts of money that they have stolen, still stealing, that's supposed to have changed this country and put us in a better space. The country is in a big and huge debt. We are owing trillions of dollars. Buari is still borrowing and borrowing money and borrowing money and people are here still stealing and mentioning the money and you people are doing comedy skits about it and laughing about it. By now, we are supposed to be on the streets protesting and saying we don't want this anymore, we want to change. Everybody in that old system, in this old system is supposed to step down. It's supposed to step down. They are not doing anything. They are just businessmen that are enriching themselves. And you people are doing comedy skits about it and making fun, laughing, using it as a content to trend. Now, you are seeing the reason why we are in this shit. And it's funny to you guys. Nigerians, that's when they, when they insult us and say we are, we are, we are, we are lazy youths, we are and please to the president, Buari, all your strategies have failed us. Please change your strategy. Change your strategy. For God's sake, this is not for <laughs> Okay, guys. Just when we thought we've seen it all, we got report about some hundred billion naira missing within a year from the account of the Northeast Development Commission (NEDC), established in 2017 to reconstruct states affected by insurgency in North. East. According to reports, the minority House of Reps leader, Ndidi, said the 100 billion naira given to the commission by the federal government has vanished with nothing to show for it. Ndidi accused Mohamed Alkali, the commission's managing director, of awarding non-existent contracts. 
Okay, guys, moving on to the next one here. We have Chris Ngige. Everyone is talking about this video of Chris Ngige, Minister of Labor and Employment, who was summoned by the House of Representatives Committee investigating the suspension of the management of Nigeria's Social Insurance Trust Fund. Ngige in that video was seen abusing Honorable James Faliki. For those who didn't, you know, understand what happened or uh, what triggered in Gigi, here is a clip that showed that. Let's watch this video so you can see how unserious our leaders are. You are a former governor, by the grace of God. You are also a former senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I also want to ask that... You served the first tenure as a minister, now it's your second tenure. Oil Minister, will you say your appointment by, the Mr. by Mr. President was based on you being a member of the party or because of your personality or because of your performance for the president at the election? Because I look at the results. I discovered that in your local government, you scored 2000 and 2002 for the president, while the PDP scored 17,000 for the chairman. Thank you. That is my question. Thank you. Who are like my junior brothers, except I like it, they say it's up to 60. I don't know. I'm 60 plus. Uh -huh. So you are near my age, but I'm at least seven years older than you. I'm sure. I'm the same age with your mentor in Lagos, as you are. And I was governor with him at the same time. He was a senator, but I was a senator. I'm a two-time minister, he's not a two-time minister. But he won all his elections very well. No problem about that. Just like you won their own in Kogi State very well. Yes. And uh, you are now the deputy governor and governor of Kogi State. Mr. Mr. Minister, please respond. Well, I've responded, my friend. If you have me, I have I, ten I, times. I won. I'm a Lagos boy. I'm a Lagos boy, you are just a small boy in Lagos. <laughs> look, at, look at this boy. Mushin boy, he's talking to a, a BI boy. I live in Peter Island. Look at Mushin boy. From Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, 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 bro, bro, bro. just go. I don't get time for you. Kilo share. <laughs> Okay, guys, so that is it. Moving on to the next news. With the current state of the economy, Buhari still traveled to Mali for the ECOWAS peace mission. Your country is in chaos. You are going to another country for peace mission. Let's read what Imam of <laughs> let's read what Imam of Peace on Twitter have to say. This picture is a solid evidence that Buhari is a failed president. His own house is burning and is going on peace missions to other nations. Meanwhile, in other news, President Mahmoud Buhari is the most followed sub-Saharan African leader on, on Twitter with over 3 million followers, according to BCW, a multinational public relations and communication firm whose headquarters is in New York City. The company made this known in its newly released 2020 Triplomacy study. According to the study, Mr. Buhari is ahead of Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, with 1.9 million followers. <laughs> Celebrity president. <laughs> well, guys, let us go back to the case of um, him going to Mali. Um, let, let's watch um, what Rene Mokri have to say about the president traveling to Mali. As I speak to you today, Right now, General Mohamed Buhari is in Mali, ostensibly to keep the peace in Mali. As some of you may know, yesterday in Nigeria, five aid workers were killed by Boko Haram in Borneo State. Five aid workers. The video is horrible, and I, 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 I mean, I, I, I cried when I watched the video. Made them kneel down, shot them. Now, General Muhammad Buhari has gone to Mali. Now, here's the thing. I want you to Google the latest Global Terrorism Index. 
Just Google it, the latest ter global terrorism index. Mali is actually more secure than Nigeria. Nigeria is number three, the third most insecure nation in the world. Only two countries are more insecure than Nigeria, Afghanistan and Iraq. Even Syria, where there's been um, uh, yeah, war for, for several years, is actually more secure than Nigeria. Yemen, where they have an ongoing war, is actually more secure than Nigeria. Mali is the 13th, look at that, 13th least secure country in the world. So there are 10 places ahead of Nigeria. Some of you know, last week, 18 soldiers went to Katsina State, where General Muhammad Bouhari is from, to keep the peace. They were all slaughtered by bandits. In that same Katsina, seven children were killed by a hand grenade. Two weeks ago, Boko Haram attacked a military barracks. Till today, we don't know how many people have died. And this man has gone to Mali to keep the peace. Do you know the Malians will look at him and laugh? Go and keep the peace in your country. These are aid workers who left their homes, their children, to go and help, and they've been killed. And this man keeps on releasing so-called repentant Boko Haramis. That's why this problem is happening. So, guys, that is where I'm going to hold it. It's just so sad, you know, reporting all these things and seeing all the millions flying around without, you know, these millions reaching the poor. You know, it's just so sad. <laughs> Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for listening. Until we see you next time, peace out.